Good morning. Welcome to the Pastor Don Weekly Podcast Show. I want to thank you so much for joining me and listening to my weekly devotional today on Spreaker or maybe you're viewing it on Facebook or later on YouTube or wherever on social media. Again, it's an honor and it's a privilege to be able to give you my thoughts each and every week on a Bible teaching with the goal of building you up in Christ. Before I start my opening monologue, I want to welcome my friend and brother, my hardworking friend and brother, <laughs> Donovan, to the show. How are you? I'm doing great. Doing great. Tired? Very tired. Very <laughs> this tired. man's been working day and night, putting <laughs> windows in and siding in. Siding in my house, upgrading he's, a little he's bit. He's upgrading his house. It looks, I'm telling you, we're in his studio and it mm. looks great. Yeah. It's a lot of work, but I'm sure at the end it's going to be all worth yeah. it. Yeah, uh, Pastor Don's been trying to tell me to put in some extra speakers and maybe extend yeah. the studio so he could have the. I, I'm <laughs> waiting for that. I'm sure that's in the plan. Yes, so yes. I'm hoping it's in the budget. So <laughs> we'll take we'll take a look at that. So, right. Anyways, let me get started on my opening monologue. You know, already we've taken a look at the first four bold judgments of God from Revelation chapter 16. Let me just refresh your memory, just in case you may have forgotten. The first bold judgment was the judgment of the painful sores all over the bodies of those who took the mark of the beast. The second bold judgment was the judgment of all the seas that turned completely into blood. Last week, we reviewed the third bold judgment, which was the judgment on all fresh waters, contamination of all the fresh waters. And of course, the fourth bold judgment from last week is the judgment of the scorching sun, in which the intensity of the heat on those earth dwellers was so bad and there was no fresh water to drink from. What a horrible time for these people who took this mark of the beast. Now think, I just want to take a step back. Let's think about the world at this time from what we've discussed. As of now, within this great tribulation, over 50% of the world's population Mm -hmm. is dead. There are wars still going on. There are still famine. More and more diseases running rampant all over the earth. It is a dictatorship. With the Antichrist in control of everything you say and do. And there is no fresh water, but there is intense heat. I'm telling you, with that description, (laughs) I would not want to be living here on this earth. God warned us about this time explicitly in Romans 2 verse 5. I'm going to read to you Romans 2 verse 5, but from the New Living Translation. Romans 2 verse 5 says this, But because you are stubborn and refuse to turn from your sin... You are storing up terrible punishment for yourself, for a day of anger is coming when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. God's righteous judgment is being revealed in these bold judgments. So let me me keep going. Fifth bold judgment. Let me read to you from Revelation 16, starting in verse 10. Revelation 16, verse 10 says this, The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast and his kingdom, And the entire kingdom was plunged into darkness. Men gnawed their tongues in agony. Verse 11, And they cursed God of the heavens because of their pains and their sores, but they refused to repent of what they have done. This fifth bold judgment is very simply called darkness. The kingdom's location of the Antichrist is going to be plunged into complete darkness. This means complete darkness that you basically can see nothing. It's almost like walking each and every each and every day with your eyes closed. How hard would that be? Very I mean, hard. Think about that for a second. I mean, I, I I just pray so much for folks who are struggling with eyesight, struggling with blindness in one eye or both eyes. But the the idea of this entire world being being subjected to this judgment of darkness, it would be completely scary in regards to having it completely dark. Think about it. you can't drive. You can't work. You can't accomplish anything because you can't see anything. It's like God saying, okay, you don't want to see my light? Then you will get the darkness. John 8, 12 teaches us when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Again, this is different from the fourth trumpet judgment from two, about four weeks ago when only one-third of the world was living in darkness. Here we see from these verses that the earth will be in complete darkness. So think about it. At this point, there's no water. Jesus is our living water. And there's no light. Jesus is the light of the world. And yet the people continue to live with these painful sores on their bodies 
from God's mark on them for those who took the mark of the beast. They are living in misery, but they still do not repent, and they continue to curse God. This is why when you and I encounter an individual that has this heart of stone towards God, we need to pray for God to change and transform that heart. Some people may seem to be beyond saving, but you know what? Nothing is impossible with God. Amen. However, God will not interfere in our free will. We can choose to surrender to Him, or we can continue to live our lives separated from Him. And of course, as I've said many times, there's terrible consequences to bad choices. All right, five bold judgments down, two to go. Let's take a look at number six. We can find it in Revelation 16, verse 12. Revelation 16, 12 says this, The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. This judgment is known as the drying up of the Euphrates. Well, you think about it, he says, well, wait a minute. You talk about painful sores. You talk about fresh waters being contaminated. You talk about darkness and scorching heat. This one doesn't sound so bad. Mm -hmm. Just drying up a river so, you know, you know, the east and west can basically be combined together. What's the problem? That's not so bad. But you got to think it from God's point of view. It's more than just drying up a river. He needs to get the kings and the armies of the east of the river across Euphrates into Israel in order to prepare for that final battle at Armageddon. Folks, this was prophesied in Zechariah 14, verses 2 to 3. Let me read it to you. Zechariah 14, starting in verse 2, says this, I will gather, I being God, will gather all the nations to Jerusalem to fight against it. The city will be captured, the houses ransacked, and the women raped. Half of the city will go into exile, but the rest of the people will not be taken from the city. Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of the battle. So what does that mean? What is the point of all this? Let's continue in Revelation 16, starting in verse 13. Revelation 16, verse 13 says this, Then I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouths of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Verse 14, there are, these are spirits of demons performing miraculous signs, and they go out to the kings of the entire world to gather them from the battle on the great day of the God Almighty. Now, a few weeks ago, I talked about the three woes. And the third woe, basically, was Satan trying to orchestrate this war between God and the world. A lot of people always ask me that question. How is God going to gather all these armies from all of Because you got to remember, Donovan, most of the largest armies in the world is going to come from that east. Right. Because they've got the largest population. Mm -hmm. So when you think about the drying up the Euphrates, now it makes a little bit more sense. What God is trying to do is give them access, access to cross over this amazingly big river to be able to get to Armageddon, which is located in Israel, mm -hmm. for this final battle against God. And what does this uh, Antichrist and dragon do? He sends out these three frogs with the message to come, come to Armageddon, come to Megiddo, which is in Israel, and let's fight against the Lord. And this is what happens. Satan, even at this point, we're towards the end of this great tribulation, he still believes that he can defeat God. <laughs> so God clears the way, and that's what this sixth bold judgment is all about. So now all these armies, these huge armies, can come across the uh, Euphrates and join Satan and the armies in Israel to fight and confront Jesus. This is summarized in Revelation 16.16. 16. Revelation 16, 16 says this, Then they gathered the kings together to a place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. And you may be thinking, why? Why this place? Why this area in Israel for this final battle? And I'm going to tell you, it's because it is the best geographical place in Israel for a large battle. I, know, I think I told this to Donovan before. may have mentioned to the audience a few months back, I've been to this area. Okay. I've been to Armageddon. I've been to Megiddo, which is the, the, the word, the, the term for this flatland. And it's interesting that when, when I went to it, the way the tour went is that you climbed this fairly large mountain and you got to the top and you looked out and what you were looking at was vast land, completely flat, mm. completely vast land. 
That was Megiddo. Megiddo. And, and I'm thinking, how in the world can you hold an army of millions and millions upon millions of people in this area? Folks, this area was so huge that your eyes could not see the end of wow. it. So could I picture, once I was there, could I picture a huge army against the Lord to gather into this spot mm -hmm. in order to fight God? Yeah. If you Google it, Megiddo, aerial view, you would be able to see what I'm talking about. Mm. So this is a wonderful reason why God needed to dry up the Euphrates River and get all the armies, especially from the east, to Armageddon for this final battle. Now next week I'm going to discuss the final bold judgment, the seventh bold judgment, and wrap up the series on the judgments of God next week. You don't want to miss the end. It's like the climax of a sh movie. The end of a show <laughs> right. will be next week when we go through the very last bold judgment in Revelation 16. But let me just remind you one more time. It is so clear we are living in the end times. These things that God describes in Revelation, you don't have to guess. It's going to happen. But you and I and all of our family and friends can avoid this horrible time period by surrendering our lives to Jesus right now for the forgiveness of our sins. Then at the time of the rapture, we will be taken up to heaven prior to the seven-year tribulation period here on earth. Folks, you and I do not want to be here during this time, and we truly do not want any of our loved ones to experience everything we've talked about in this book of Revelation. So let's pray right now for God to use His instruments, you and I, His instruments, mm -hmm. To bring people to the saving power of Jesus for the forgiveness of sins. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we dive in more and more into the book of Revelation, we see how important it is for all of us to be witnesses to your word to everyone we know. Lord, we truly do not want anyone to have to go through this devastating time period and experience your wrath to a believing world. So, Lord, we ask you to give us the right words to spread the gospel message to everyone within our own little inner world. Help us, Lord, to live the gospel every day and feel your hope and joy so others will want to know where we get our peace. Mm. Then we can tell them all about you. Lord, we love you and honor you and give you glory. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen. 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 Well, folks, thank you so much for listening to my opening monologue on the 5th and six bold judgments from the book of Revelation. As I mentioned, next week we're going to take a look at the seventh and final bold judgment and climax all the judgments of God next, next week. We're coming to the end of this podcast series on end times. And if you're still confused about anything that you've heard, or if you want to hear it again, or you need further clarification, you can message me at Reflections Ministries' Facebook page. You can contact me. My number is on that page. You can find Donovan on his Inland Empire Informer, and he will get the information to, to me. My goal here is I want you to understand. I want you to be lifted up in Christ, and I want you to be clear on God's prophecies for the end times from his word. And I hope, again, you will join us next week as we conclude this series on end times from the book of Revelation. And of course, I want you to continue to please enjoy and share my Reflections Ministries Facebook page. We're almost at 2100, which is such a big blessing. It's that growing and, and growing. That, and it's growing and growing. So thank you so much for sharing. Please continue to share this page with all your family and friends. And if you've never checked it out, go to your Facebook, type in Reflections Ministries, check out the page, check out the devotionals, the podcast, the memes. I hope you'll like it. I hope you'll follow it. And I hope you'll share it. Again, thank you so much for listening. And God bless you and your family. Yes. Wow. Coming to the end, end of the series. And it's been uh, uh, very interesting. I've been doing a little Tw studying on it. 26. 26. 26 weeks 26. On, the, on, the, on this podcast series. And I want to tell you, we can go for another 26. Mm -hmm. It is so fascinating. Mm -hmm. Because what we haven't done in this series, and what I'm thinking I might do, is now that we understand it from God's point of view... What's going on in the world today? A little bit mm. about current events versus what God said is going to happen. And you're going to start seeing a lot of that parallelism. Right. What's happening and what God says will happen is coming right to fruition. Right. Um, and what's brought up my initial question was, uh, you know, what God's talking about revelations. And unfortunately, because we live 2,000 years from when this 
these things were written, it's kind of like in a code. So how would I like, I mean, when you see these signs and these things, like when you talk about a battle, are you talking about an actual battle with tanks and planes and stuff? Are you talking about a spiritual battle in regards to, you know what I mean? I'm trying to. Well, I, I'm going to tell, answer Donovan's question the same way I'm going to answer anybody who's listening right now. Tune in next week. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you will find answer. out how the battle ends okay. next week because that's exactly what we're going to talk about. Now, just to give you a preview, will there be tanks and yeah. uh, modern warfare mm-hmm. in regard to this battle? The answer is yes. Mm-hmm. But how does God win this no. battle is something completely different. That's what we'll talk right. about next uh, week. Because, you know, a lot of people, they read the Bible and they say it's metaphoric. Oh, oh, similes, metaphors, allegory. Yeah, Yeah, it's not. It's real. His first coming was real. His second coming is going to be real. Everything we're discussing here is going to happen just like it happened when Jesus came the very first time. So we can take it to the bank. God is a God. The the Bible is a book of... of, of, um, of building up. Mm-hmm. It is not a, a book of confusion. If it happened in the first time, it's going to happen the second time. We could take okay. that to the bank. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm just playing dab- devil's advocate. So, like, cyber warfare is also going to be taking place. You oh, know, absolutely. Modern warfare. Computer. Yeah, fighting on the computers, ho- however they can get it. It's going to be exactly what we're seeing this world going towards. Mm-hmm. You know, we there's a lot of talk in the, in the news today about meddling in elections, which has been going on mm-hmm. for years and years. years yeah. And it goes on in every election. Mm-hmm. But the idea of cyber warfare is going to continue to grow. As we get closer and closer to AI, mm-hmm. which in, in the audience, that's artificial intelligence, robotics, and all this, it's going to be more and more cyber-type terrorism mm-hmm. going to happen. Is this going to be part of this? Absolutely. Now, how that fits into what the Bible teaches, not 100 percent sure but we do real we do know from the bible how it's going to end so yeah the, i would say that all those things that we're seeing today is going to probably get quite a bit worse as we go yeah. further and further into um the end the end of this earth as we know i have a question for you uh, now we're talking about ai and stuff like that now let's say i get and i'm a good christian or i think i'm a good christian i go to church every sunday not that that means anything you don't have to go to church every sunday to be saved Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I recommend it because yeah. that's how you get fed. Yeah. But no, no, you don't. Right. That doesn't save you going to church. What right. saves you is your faith in faith Christ. In Christ. I, I believe in God and I'm doing all this other stuff. Now I'm elected president of the United States or some country. And I arbitrarily asked somebody to go bomb and kill 3,000 people. How, the, how would that affect me, in your opinion, of me as a uh, Christian? Well, that's a tough question. Yeah. You know, because a lot of quick, a lot of, a lot of um, Christians that I've, I've met and that I've heard, you know, take that pacifist, I guess, best attitude about not wanting to serve in the military mm-hmm. or not wanting to get involved in any type of conflict because of their religious mm-hmm. beliefs. You know, but you which know, I respect. I respect and that. I don't I don't I, I totally respect mm-hmm. that as well. But the Bible teaches that, you know, war is real mm-hmm. and wars do happen. You know, if you go look at the Old Testament, how many wars that Israel was involved with that God Constant. led them. Mm-hmm. You know, the one I think about the most is like Jericho and right. so many Wipe battles against the Moabs, the Philistines, and all mm-hmm. these others. David, I mean, it's not like God is com- uh, is um, is promoting violence, but God is promoting the fact that you know you have to take care of what's important in your in your mm-hmm. life in this country. It's mm-hmm. important to take care of the people within this country, type thing. So the idea of utilizing you know your your Christian beliefs for not wanting to serve your country, I'm not 100 percent sure if that's the best best thought because you're using the Bible as a crutch mm-hmm. versus using the idea of um uh, of, of letting allowing God to lead you in whatever you know you know battle you have to go mm-hmm. to or if you go to Iraq, Iran, mm-hmm. Afghanistan. You know, God will be with you the entire time that you're there. So do I believe in going to war? Of course not. I don't mm-hmm. want anybody getting killed. I'm not. In, but if the country did go to war and they asked an older person to go and fight, right. um, I would fight for my country because mm-hmm. I think that's what God wants us to do. We would fight for what we believe in and we believe in this country. But well, Yeah. Well, the reason why I asked that question is because like, you, you see George H.W. Uh, not H.W. Uh, w. Bush always talk about his – he puts his Christianity always mm-hmm. out there. And I'm not judging the man, but – we went to a war of, of choice. Mm-hmm. We didn't have to go there. Thousands of people have been maimed. maimed. Uh, thousands of people have been killed and are continuing to be killed. Mm-hmm. As, and I, I just always wondered this. He keeps saying, oh, I'm a Christian. and I'm, you know, He's doing all this stuff. But if you look at his actions, it really wasn't, in my opinion, what a Christian would do. And a lot of people ask me that question. And I say, well, I'm not a spiritual man. But to me, that's not a Christian. Yeah. No. Now, you're talking about the second bush, right? The second bush. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I got. I, I'm not a political guy. Yeah, this ain't political. It's just. It's just talking about. Like, I have. A, I have a little bit of an issue. A little bit of an issue with uh, Mr. Bush, Mr. Mm-hmm. Bush, the second one, mm-hmm. uh, because of his the way he treated Israel. I'm a very you know supporter mm-hmm. of Israel because the Bible's a supporter of Israel, mm-hmm. God's chosen people. Uh, I, I, you know, a lot of people say, you know, you know, you know, some of our our actions do not reflect our Christian values mm-hmm. and Christian beliefs, but sometimes we use that as an excuse. Mm-hmm. I. I I didn't think the Iraq War was a smart, you know, smart right. move as well. I think a lot of people died in that war. You know, that it could have been done differently. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm not going to judge Mr. Bush's part because I don't mm-hmm. know it at all. But I, I do believe, and I think where Donovan's going with this is that our actions should reflect our beliefs. There's no question about it. You know, I, but again, but it can't justify. You know what we want it to believe versus what the Bible actually mm-hmm. does teach us. Like you can't say I don't want to do this because God told me not to do this. Right. Well, if this word does not um, does does not uh, support what you're saying. Then you're just using that as an excuse mm-hmm. not to do what you know what you should be doing. But um, yeah, I, I do believe that if you are a strong Christian and you truly believe in the Word of God then you need to be obedient to the word mm-hmm. over the obedience of man. And yeah, your actions should show it. It right. really should. And, and the reason I bring that up is because for those that are listening and watching, we, I just talked about how everything's a metaphor. People talk about Bible as a metaphor. This is a part of the sign, sign that's in the book of Revelations of how wars are going to be happening mm-hmm. so close to the Euphrates and oh, absolutely. In that area. Mm-hmm. So you really, I mean, you know, you can believe what you want and deny, 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 oh, it's not, it's not happening right now, whatever. Mm-hmm. I believe we're there. Yeah. yeah. We're yeah. very, we're, we are there. And, and I think that all the signs that we've discussed in the last 25 weeks in regards to this series, I mean, it's getting worse and worse. I mean, I can yeah. remember when we started this series a few months back. And we're looking at today, and the division's even wider. The wars are getting stronger. The you know the the, the morality the, 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 is out of control. The lawlessness is even worse. I mean, right. yeah, the, are the signs getting stronger? Absolutely. So you're right. Mm-hmm. We're there. Mm-hmm. We are there. So that's why we need to mm-hmm. truly live out our faith and really be a strong witness for God. Right. And I'm not like trying to down you know the bush. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not ju- I don't judge any person yeah. because you know he may have had a in his heart he may have the right reasons for why he did it. But I think what your point is is mostly is that you need to live your faith versus yeah. just preach your faith. Right. You, I mean, your words are important, and what you say is important. But if it's not backed up by what to, what you right. do, then it doesn't have as much value. Right. And I think that's where you're going yes, with that. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I and, agree with that. And you know, and same time, telling people, you know, he could have been the catalyst of giving us a sign that we're in these days. I I, I agree. So uh, I agree. He sh- yeah, I, yeah, I agree with that. You know, a lot of people say that in regard to pastors. You know. Mm. You know, we up there, and you know, you get certain types. You got the quieter type pastors who just mm. preach the word. You got the louder, more Theatrical. outspoken type pastors that just mm. go crazy. And 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 um and most of these pastors, you know, they try to do a very good, good job, job of teaching mm. the word. But if they're not reflecting that life, the biblical life, the Christ centered life, then what does all those words mean? Exactly, they don't mean anything. Exactly. They don't mean anything because they have. You know what people do? People imitate what they see. Mm. Yes, they listen, and I hope you're listening to me as well, and Donovan and I today. But they also imitate what you do, and if you're and what you're doing is not matching up what you're preaching, mm-hmm. then your words has got really not a lot of value. And that's where the, that's what the whole thing with with um, uh, President Bush. It's the same thing with with anybody, and, and for that level to just someone like myself. If I'm here talking to you about we got to be witnessing, and I never say one word to, about one person about Jesus in my life, then what good is it? Why am I preaching if I'm not doing it myself? Right, right. Same same idea. So I agree with that. Right. You have to live what you preach. Right. Um, you know, like with the thing that's going on with President Trump right now, and this ain't a political show. What we're trying to say is there was a, there was a lot of people, a lot of evangelicals out there that was uh, up in arms about what President Clinton did, and I was and I wholeheartedly agreed with them. Mm-hmm. You know, the morality of what he was doing, messing with an intern and stuff like that. But it all, again, it also told me as a Christian, there's a sign we're in those days. Yeah. Because when you look at our leaders and our leaders are not moral yeah. or following the word, it tells you one thing. Now uh, we have President Trump that's in there and all these allegations and their mm-hmm. allegations, because I, I don't know if they're true or not, mm-hmm. um, are coming out. Mm-hmm. And OK, some things have been proven, which is fine, but. Again, you got a lot of people that that look at our leaders because our leaders are put there by God. And I'm not saying all leaders are good. 
there are some bad leaders out there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, is this guy morally bankrupt? In my opinion, Donovan's opinion only. Yes, he's morally bankrupt. However, it, all this does is reinforce my knowledge that we are there yeah. in the days. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I'm, again, I'm not a political guy. You know, right. I, I think we, the, one of the reasons why evangelicals are in, still in love with President Trump is not because of his moral values. I don't think he's got a lot of moral values, in my own personal opinion. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's made a lot of bad choices. Right, but isn't that hypocritical? Huh? But isn't that hypocritical? Well, it, it, it's kind of, it's hypocritical from one sense, and mm-hmm. yet maybe it's a growing. I mean, when we talk about some of the things he's done mm-hmm. in the past, many, many years mm-hmm. ago, you know, what I'm trying to do, and I'm trying to keep yeah. a positive spin, sure. is that maybe he's growing in regards to his understanding of what a real Leader. Christian type life should mm-hmm. look like because obviously okay. he didn't live it. I mean, pr- let's be honest. President Trump was a playboy since mm-hmm. uh, you know up to a few years back. I mean, right. that's that's how he lived. You know, yeah. He he made a statement. His Vietnam was uh, avoiding STDs. And yeah, things. exactly. Yeah. So I mean, so his 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 lifestyle was you know very much made up his own makeup. But from an evangelical point, why people love him so much is number one, mm-hmm. and it's very important for true evangelicals is that he supports Israel. Mm -hmm. I mean, moving the embassies uh, over to Jerusalem was a huge Huge plus Mm -hmm. uh, for those that are evangelicals who love the Bible, who Mm -hmm. love Israel, because we do believe that it's God's chosen people. Mm -hmm. What he's trying to do in regard to this religion tolerance, you know, right now, I think is is a big step too, because I'm going to be honest with you folks, most countries in this world, are I mean, Christians are getting slaughtered everywhere. They're getting slaughtered I mean, it's it's to the point that if owning a Bible will get you killed. Having a, a you know you know, not you know not living within a certain other faith will get you killed. Mm-hmm. You know, having a church service will get so the religious uh, freedoms of all these different countries is just literally out of control. Right. So the fact that he's actually addressing that with the, his vice president Pence in regards to try to to uh, gather religious you know, tolerance, religious freedoms in countries that there is none, I think that's a good step. Now, will that go anywhere? Only God knows how that far that's going to get. But the fact that he's addressing it Mm -hmm. and he's trying to help Christians and other faiths that are getting persecuted basically for believing Mm -hmm. in the Bible, believing in Christ, I think that's a good first step. And those are what the evangelicals are seeing. Now, if we just judge Mr. Trump on just his morality, that'd be one story. But his actions are showing that he does have... You know, he does have a, a, a um, you know, a, a love for, you know, the Jewish folks or he would have moved the embassy and he has a love for, you know, the religious freedoms of all and all areas. So those are two positive areas, okay. I think, is something that we got to give him credit for that he's trying to accomplish. OK, and, and I, I'll agree with that it, you know, in, in regards to that, from, mm-hmm. from what you just said. So him saying that other countries are uh, assholes and uh, well, I don't agree and, with and, that. and the redneck. Uh, supporting us no, and stuff like that is the one thing I don't like about President Trump. And again, this is not mm. a political show. No, it's not but, a political show. Um, just, what, I don't like the tweets. I, mm. I, 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 my wife, my wife loves President Trump, yeah. and that's okay. I think yeah, that's, that's and there's a lot of good things about the man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think his tweets are not. I think that you know I, I understand why he does it. You know he's a, he, he you know the fake news, and so mm. he wants to get his point of view mm. out. And he says it in the only way that he knows how. Well. You know, as a president, you do have to have some tact. You do have to have protocol. some protocol. You do have to have some protocol. So mm-hmm. the way he does things, not really excited about it. But again, I go back to the actions. And if the actions are supporting the things that I truly believe in, mm-hmm. which is like, you know, like Israel, religious freedom, you know, things that I think that is important for us, you know, I other things, calling people names and, you know, mm-hmm. knocking uh, different groups down or knocking an right. individual down. No, that's not me. And that's not why I, I don't believe in those things at all. And I don't agree with that. But in regards to policies that's going to help religious freedoms all over the world, yeah, I do agree right. with that. And um, the reason the reason I, I bring that up again is only because if there are a lot of people out there that think the Bible is metaphoric, mm-hmm. and this these are signs that are showing you that we're there. I mean, there's to me some references in Revelations and in the Bible where they talk about these false prophets or these false, now not that Trump is, you know what I mean, but these signs right. that say, okay, you know, they're going to be war, endless wars. Well, We've been in a war for 16 years. Well, let, let me let me help Donovan here out in a little bit because what he's saying is very true. Mm-hmm. I'd say not, I'd say over 80% of true Bible believing Christians mm-hmm. believe that Revelation is allegorical. Allegorical. Eighty right. percent. Mm-hmm. What that means, they don't believe that's literal. Right. They don't believe that what we just talked about for the last twenty-seven mm-hmm. weeks is actually going to happen. Is actually going to come true. 
And that's about 80%, mm -hmm. including the Catholics, the right, Methodists, and right. many other denominations that do not even teach from Revelation mm -hmm. because they don't believe it's real. It's, it's something mm -hmm. that's just representative or symbolic of something mm -hmm. else. Folks, I truly yes. do not believe that's the case. I really, truly believe in, in regards to the first coming of Christ, mm -hmm. it was completely literal. Mm -hmm. Over 300 prophecies of the first coming of Christ came completely fulfilled to the letter and there's over 300 prophecies of the second coming. Why would God not make that as little as the first coming? Mm -hmm. I am completely convinced, convinced. Mm -hmm. of the pre-trib rapture, which a lot of, I've talked to many pastors mm -hmm. about the pre-trib rapture, and I get laughed at. <laughs> I get mocked. I get persecuted. You say, oh, what? You're the great escape? I've heard every term <laughs> there is. And it's nothing about a great escape. It's what Christ teaches. Jesus. It's all about the word. We're not escaping anything. We're persecution here. But the, but the Lord is very, very clear, clear on regard to his wrath and his children. And we will not be going through the wrath. That's just what the Bible teaches. It has nothing to do with an escape. But people will laugh at me and say, no, 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 no. You, we need to be out there witnessing. Really? Seriously? That's what you got the 144,000 for. That's why you got the, the three angels for, the two witnesses. That's what the job is. The church has no involvement in regards to uh, the, revel uh, the uh, tri uh, tribulation period. So a lot of people laugh at me about this, and that's okay. I always say this, dog, but, you know, when we have the rapture before the tribulation, I'll just be telling them, I told you so, when we go up. <laughs> I only got a split right. second to yeah, do, it. do it. It's a, but, it's, it's a twinkle of an eye, but I think I can yeah, get it out. Get it out. <laughs> you can get it out. So, um, but uh, I always try to tell people, you got to, you know, even though we're living in this thing, and I know everybody's distracted by what's going on, I believe that you've got to intermingle what's going on today with studying the Bible and especially the revelation. Oh, I totally agree. So, so that you'd have a better acknowledgement when you see something happening, you're not going to be as panicked or as, or as afraid. Oh, I totally agree with that. And I think once we finish this, let me tell you where this series is going. Next, we're going to, t I mean, next we're going to take a look at the seventh uh, uh, judgment of God uh, from the bull, seventh bull judgment. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to take a look at what we I call the millennium period, which is a thousand years after mm -hmm. the seven year tribulation, after um, the idea that we have this new heaven and this new earth that's mm -hmm. described beautifully in, in Revelation 21 and 22. We talk about the seven year thousand, uh, the uh, thousand year millennium in, in uh, Revelation chapter 20. I want to talk a little bit about that, maybe go a couple of weeks on that. Mm -hmm. And then even after that, that's what I'm thinking will take a few weeks. You know, Don and I, we're going to look, take a look at a few current events. Mm -hmm. Just maybe take a couple of them and then see how it relates to what's going on in the world today versus what the Bible says is going to happen. And just have a little bit of, uh, um, of fun seeing the Bible unfold before us. And that's what I think. And people need to apply this. Okay, you can look, listen to all these podcasts. Okay, okay, okay. I heard you, Pastor Don. I heard mm. you all these. But I don't see it. Well, then that's where we need to kind of, sh put the, kind of put the rest of the puzzle together so you can actually see what's going on and see it's happening in front of us. Right on. Uh, we got 10, 10 more minutes to go. Uh, let's see, let's see, go ahead and do yeah, your Yeah, you know, it's funny. You know, one of the things I, I, I've been talking to people about is the importance, the importance of um, meditating on God's Word. Uh, you know, and a lot of people say, you know, I read the Bible. I enjoy the Bible. Mm -hmm. I, you know, that type of thing. I said, and I asked him, I said, well, how, do you ever memorize verses in the Bible? And, um, I don't. and they say, no, no, we, I don't. And I say, why not? I said, well, it's just too hard. It's too, too, too much in the Bible to memorize. And that's when I did a poll. And I just thought this was kind of interesting. I'm going to do a poll. I'm going to see how well Donovan does on this. And I'm going to ask uh, Donovan. I'm going to ask Donovan a question. I want you to think about these, uh, uh, this question in your own heart as well. But let me ask you this, Donovan. If you had to pick one verse, one verse in the Bible that you say well, you could consider your Favorite verse, you could consider it your life verse, mm -hmm. you could consider it your verse that, that builds you up and uh, builds your, 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 yourself up. What would you say be the one verse that, um, that, that speaks to you? There, there's a lot that I like, but I, I have to go with love thy neighbor as you, as you love thyself. Okay, so uh, love the Lord your God right. with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and mm -hmm. with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. Did you memorize that verse? I didn't. Well, you know half of it. You know, yeah. love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. You, you missed the first verse, which right. is most important, but that's yeah. okay. <laughs> love the Lord your God first right. type thing. But that verse talks to you. Mm -hmm. It speaks to you. And it's the thing that, you know, the reason why it's important that I ask him that is because when he's talking to somebody and he's saying, you know, and they look and he says, well, what, what, what do you believe? First thing that can come out of his mind, his mouth is, 
I, I love my I love the Lord with all my heart, soul, and mind, and I love people as I love myself. It's a verse that he may not realize he memorized, but he did. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to give you what the memorized verses, the top five memorized verses in the Bible from a poll that was taken a, a few few years back. Okay. The top five, and I and actually it's funny, I actually agree with these top five verses. Okay. If you're going to memorize verses, start with these top five. And you probably already have, have memorized them. But the whole idea of memorizing verses is not just to keep them in memory, but to when you're talking to people, when you're showing people why you love Jesus, you pick, mm-hmm. take these verses from your mind and you express them out so people can understand this is why you love the mm-hmm. Lord. Okay, number five. Number five most memorized verse. Romans 8.28 And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. Why people love that verse is because we sometimes don't understand why we go through tough times. Mm -hmm. We don't understand why bad things happen to good people. We don't understand why we're struggling in our lives. But when we read this verse, when we're feeling overwhelmed and we're feeling frustrated, we don't get it. But guess what, folks? God I does. Guess. Mm-hmm. He gets it, and he uses all these little things in our lives for his good. People love that verse. Number four, probably a verse everybody knows. Probably not sure why, but they all yeah. love it. It's Psalm 23. Uh-huh. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for you are with me. That, believe it or not, even those are four um, four verses in one, that verse is memorized more, fourth largest, fourth verse that's uh, memorized the most is Psalm 23, those, at least those first four, because it brings peace to people's a lot hearts. Of the, a lot of military people know, uh, know that verse. Oh my gosh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Mm-hmm. He makes me light. Everything's so peaceful when you say that verse. It calms mm-hmm. you. It soothes you. So you have that verse in your heart. Whatever you're going through, which is probably a lot of mm-hmm. stress and anxiety, that those verses brings you peace. And that's why people love it. Number three. I'm sure a verse that Donovan knows well. One of my favorite verses is Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. That is a huge verse that people absolutely love because God's got your back. I have the plans for you. Mm-hmm. I know what you're, you're capable of. I created you and I've got the perfect plan for your life. Again, hope. When you're feeling hopeless, you don't have to rethink that you're worthless that you have no value because God's got the perfect plan for you and your life if you let him, if you surrender to him. Number three. Number two. Now, I know this is what, this was, this was actually probably my number two. I love this first morning. It's Philippians 4.13. I can do anything through Christ mm. who gives me strength. Boy, that verse is, is spoken a lot, especially when you're tired. Yeah. When you're burdened. When you're stressful. When you just feel like you just can't do it. And you just need that strength within you. And then you remember Philippians 4.13. I truly can do anything through Christ. That's the key. Through Christ who gives me strength. Boy, that has really blessed a lot of people. And then, of course, number one, by a mile <laughs> that everybody quotes. And I'm going to tell you the reason. I'm going to ask Donovan if he, had, if he knows the reason. But let me tell you, of course, it's John 3.16. 3.16, yes. I know the reason. For God yes. so loved the world. <laughs> That he gave his one and only son, yes. that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Yes. Now, Donovan, let me ask you this. Why do you think, by far, John 3.16 is the most popular verse to memorize than any other verse, if you had to guess? If I had to guess, uh, you know, and, and, and this is why I think it's popular, is because, you know, you, you, you gave, you know, it's like your son, or if you have your son playing football or a sport, I, you know, like you gave your son for this sport to give his all. The sacrifice. The sacrifice, sacrifice right. Exactly. His all. That's very true. The other reason why John 3.16 is so popular, it's the entire gospel message. Think about yes, the gospel message. True. The that's gospel true. is all about what Jesus did. Yes. It's all about Jesus. 
God giving his son to die for our sins. That's the gospel message. Everything centered on that gospel message is in that verse. So when you think about that verse and you think about your faith, it's centered on John mm-hmm. 3, 16, that God so loved us. He didn't do this because he had to. He didn't right. do this because, you know, right. there's pressure. He did it because of love mm-hmm. that he would send his only son to die for a, for a nothing like me. Right. You know, I'm not nothing yeah. against, yeah. but I'm nothing like, mm-hmm. like a nothing like anybody, anybody. Mm-hmm. because of his amazing love for us. Right. That's the gospel message. Right. That's what the Bible is all about. God's amazing love and, and grace for for us. That's why John 3.16 yeah. is so popular. So what I'm going to encourage the audience to do is when you can, let me read those five verses again. Romans 8.28, 8, Psalms 23 verses 1 to 4, Jeremiah 29.11, Philippians 4.13, and then of course John 3.16. If there's any verses that I think that you would start off with in memorization, to utilize, to talking to people, to witnessing to others, mm-hmm. to just soothe yourself, just within your own soul. Those are the first five verses first I five would. Verses. And I'm going to next we talk about a couple more verses that I want you to ponder on in your hearts. Because what I'm thinking is, every one of us is going through something. Yes. Either burdened, you know, you're struggling, health, mm-hmm. uh, relationships, mm-hmm. finance, whatever. We're all going through something. And some people go, well, where do I turn in the Bible? What am I supposed right. to do? I don't know where to go. Mm-hmm. Well, what I want to do in the next couple of weeks as we as we conclude these podcasts is give you just a couple of verses. I'm not going to burden you with a million verses mm-hmm. because you're not going to remember them anyways. Mm-hmm. But it's just one, two, or three verses that can speak to you yes. at the time what you're dealing with and that can help you, that can lift you up, that can make you feel peace versus stress right. in, that, in, in that time. Being. That's what we wanted. That's what this show is all about. It's about teaching in regards to the book of Revelation and then building you up in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you know, the funny thing about 316, whenever you see a football game or a basketball game, oh, yeah. there's an old guy or, a, you know, a, a young father, it seems like a young father throwing up a sign that mm-hmm. says 316. And I always laugh because it's probably his son is on the – on the court, or he's praying for the players that are very young. I mean, yeah. so and and basically, you know, for an athlete, he gave it. They want their kids to give their all. Yeah, they want to give their all, and it's all about complete sacrifice. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, you, and I could never relate to John three sixteen, right. but you know what? I am grateful for John three sixteen because that's what the gospel is all about. Right. Amen. Um, we got a, a couple minutes left. Uh, any? Yeah, I just want to just ask you folks to pray. I had a I had an uh, opportunity to meet with the. Um, with the landlord, the landlord owner of the golf course, Eric, uh, this last week. Awesome meeting. Really, really well. It went, it went great. Um, there's some challenges. I'm going to be honest with you folks. There's some challenges that might threaten the opening of the golf course at the end of the year, which was, which is the plan. Uh, I, can't devel- I can't really divulge exactly what, the, what those obstacles are, but God knows what they are. Yes. And so I'm just going to ask you just to pray that whatever – roadblocks are standing in the way mm-hmm. right now to possibly opening at the end of the year that God will remove those roadblocks anyway. so that we can continue to go forward. And then in a couple of weeks, I've got some very, very exciting news. That I just right. I told Donovan what about it. Unfortunately, I can't uh, divulge it until until Eric has told his um, his people about what the what their plans are. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you, it's something very, very exciting for Moreno Valley. Extremely exciting, even more so then what this project already right. is exciting yeah. is going to make it even better uh, for the city of Marino Valley. So right. I just ask you to continue to pray for Eric, for Wisdom, who's the, basically the uh, the owner of this project. Uh, I'm going to ask you to pray for Mark Stevens, who's the guy who's actually building the golf course and building the clubhouse restaurant type thing mm-hmm. where the church will be. And then, of course, obviously continue to pray for Reflections Marino Valley Church that we will be able to hold services and be able to worship God uh, by the end of the year as planned. So just keep this whole project in your prayers and just continue to lift it up to the Lord. And I really appreciate if you do that. Yes. Um, also, uh, a heat advisory. Oh, my gosh, folks. It's still uh, – I'm glad the humidity went down a yes, little bit. but um, 100%. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, I, I, again, if you, can, if you don't have air conditioning, uh, I just want to tell Don real quickly, can you believe last week – both my vehicles air conditioning went out. Compressors on both. Yeah. 
compressors are both. That's not a cheap thing. Yeah, you're looking at it. And I'm looking at it. Look, my wife looks at me and goes, oh, my air conditioner's not working. Oh, I said, oh, my gosh, that's bad. The very next day, my CRV air conditioner went out. Oh, it's man. like, oh, my gosh. Wow. So now I appreciate the importance of having yes. air conditioning type things. So if you don't have air conditioning, find a cooling center. They're, okay. uh, they're all over the place here in the city of Marina Valley and the areas that you live in. Find a cooling center, but especially also for your pets. Yes. I mean, I, you know, your pets, you know, they got a lot of fur and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, they got a lot of fur. I know, take care of your pets. They need to be cooled down, and, too. And they have a plenty of water for them. Absolutely. God bless you guys so much. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for listening, sharing, and enjoying this podcast. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you guys next week. Same time, same place. Five plus three.